Vagina is the leading red flag for 18 to 34 year old women, while reading is the biggest turn on for both genders. The survey showed what men and women aged 18 to 34 considered to be red flags for a romantic partner. Ah, yes. Let's uh, scroll down. Look at all these MAGA women. I got to tell you something, uh, pollsters. I'm going to I'm going to have to be real with y'all. Look, I actually agree to a certain extent that someone coming out and saying they're hardcore MAGA, probably a turnoff. Why? Well, because like strong identities like that attract strong identities. So someone who comes out and they're like wearing a Trump shirt and they're like, yes, Trump, Trump, you're going to be like, I, I don't really relate to that, that zeal. You know what I mean? Me personally, I don't care if you do it, but uh, I got to say something for the. Well, I guess it is finally time to uh, cap this series off of uh, dating and relationships and my actual feelings on this uh, with our old buddy, Mr. Beanie Guy, Tim Pool. So the other day, Tim, of course, as you guys saw earlier, he decided to release an article that had stated that uh, for the most part, uh, being a conservative was a bit of a red flag for a lot of um I guess you could say liberal women and even liberal men, but I'm here to go ahead and tell you right now that uh, what he was saying or what he's, you're about to hear him say is for the most part absolutely true, except uh, from a different perspective of which, by the way, I will be explaining in this video and also be giving you guys my current thoughts on the political landscape of what is going on as far as finding a mate. And also one more thing too, my personal feelings on... Uh, what you should be looking for when it comes to this prayer, because at the end of the day, you try to find somebody who parallels your actual value system with that right there being said, let's go ahead and roll this. Or red flag. Sure. Call it red flag. I hate to break it to you, but uh, if these ladies w with this Trump flag in these American flag bikinis or, you know, I guess American flag ish, one, one the woman on the right, doesn't, it's not really American flag. Yo, if, if they walked into any room anywhere with 18 to 34 year old men, those guys are going to tell you, I don't care that they have a Trump flag just that much. So when you look at this data, and it is funny, and it's like, do you consider each of the following behaviors as traits, a green, beige or red flag? 59% uh, of men said it's a red flag that they identify uh, uh, as MAGA Republican. Meaningless. Completely meaningless. There's a meme where it's like, uh, it's like a dude says something like, I, I, I don't understand why he keeps going back to his crazy ex-girlfriend. And then it shows this woman in a very, uh, just like, you know, you get it. It shows the woman on, on the bed. And it's like, dude, guys don't care overwhelmingly. I, older guys, like, I don't mean like old, but like guys who are leaving the, the you know, older than 30, 30, which put say older than 34 are probably going to be more like, you know, I'm old enough to realize you need a stable human being. Oh, here's the thing. And I want to go ahead and say this now. It's okay to have a partner who disagrees with you from time to time, but uh, let's not go off into Looney Tunes la-la land here with that last one. I mean, we've got people getting kicked off the uh, internet just for telling the actual truth. I mean, if, if anything, and, and you're going to hear me bring this up more and more and more, a after a while, a lot of these liberal ladies, very, very liberal ladies, will eventually start to adjust once they start realizing that they're going to become cat ladies. A lot of them will, but then again, there are also some that won't. It's okay to have somebody who disagrees with you on certain things, but of course, the bigger ones is like... Uh, Oh, I don't know, abortion, for example. The last thing you want is uh, your girlfriend or your ex-girlfriend or whatever to get pregnant and then turn right back around and not tell you about it in the relationship and go get one behind your back. That's obviously a very, very big thing, obviously. Um, being able to keep guns in your house. I don't know about you guys, but I've actually worked at a gun store before. And as a gunner myself, this right to me is a red flag as a man. If she's going to try to control uh, my ability to be able to protect myself and protect the family, that's obviously going to be a problem. I've actually seen women throw literal conniption fits at their husbands for buying a gun right there on the spot. Yeah, it's also the mark of whether somebody is pee whooped or not, whether you can't actually purchase a firearm in front of your wife. That's another very, very big one. The gender question, I'm pretty sure you guys already know how I feel about this, adult, human, female, you know, that type of thing there. Don't even get me started on that nonsense. Of course, YouTube will find a way to demonetize the video for even saying that, but maybe we'll get lucky on this one. Who the hell knows? Other very, very big issues that obviously we got to be a little bit concerned about, obviously money, things like that. Like I said, you can have some simple disagreements, but if the person's out there in la-la land, then obviously it's a problem. If she's a complete total loon, this buyer is in fact very, very much a 
problem. But of course, a little bit of slight disagreement is okay because obviously nobody wants a relationship that's oh boring. My God, you know, liberal women just don't want to date conservative men. And of course, to go on top of this, you know, uh, liberal men don't want to date conservative women. Let me go ahead and say this right now, okay? Uh, the very, very few ladies that uh, watch my channel. There have been several studies that have been cited that uh, conservatives, especially conservative ladies, typically tend to be a little bit more attractive than liberals. Also, something else, too, to go on top of this, right? there's also other studies out there that show that liberals, for the most part, have a lot more mental illnesses. That right there may contribute to the fact that uh, they may not want to keep themselves, how do I say, attractive. Now, that's not to say that every single woman that disagrees with me politically is not attractive. Trust me, I know some that, quite frankly, don't think like I do or don't think nowhere near what I do and choose a different candidate who, by the way, are in fact attractive themselves. However, I think it more than likely could be an area thing. It could also be a city thing. And, of course, it could be an overall regional thing. I know I said area, city, and regional, but let me go ahead and explain. If you live in the southern United States, we are full of southern bells, full of very, very beautiful ladies. If you go up north to somewhere like Jersey, you find a lot of very, very, very good-looking Italian ladies, very good-looking ladies of German origin. If you go to New York City, the exact same thing. But, of course, if you go somewhere like Miami, they're all over the place. Beautiful ladies, Hispanic ladies all over, everywhere. But of course, if you go out to college campuses, you do find a lot of girls who don't keep themselves attractive, which is very, very weird because you figure that the college age is when you would actually do that. Also, something else too, the vast majority of those who typically tend to be on that side of the spectrum typically tend to have the most uh, ideological leanings, of course, towards the left. They typically tend to be the feminist types. They're not exactly what we call uh, in the business or they claim they're not in the business of attracting a man but then again though we've also had this conversation where you had this lady who had this TikTok. need i remind you so you know, one of the saddest realizations i recently oh. woman it is really hard to find a man who is willing to play the more traditional masculine role in the relationship who is not a conservative she was upset that she could not find a liberal man who would actually pay the bill who would actually do the masculine things now guys i'm going to go ahead and tell you right now what my rules are on this right here Typically on the first date, and you can call me wherever you want to, I typically tend to pay the first time around. The second time around, I typically tend to try to find something else. I mean, I'm that type of person. However, after a couple of dates or a few, uh, we're going to need to start working together here, especially if we're going to be in a relationship. If she's not willing to work with you after a couple of times, then quite frankly, you need to go ahead and get away from it. Just figure I'd go ahead and throw that out there because it's a pretty solid indication that she may not help you out later on in the line because at the end of the day in marriage is you need to kind of work together. Same thing with dating, that type of thing there. I don't know. There's somebody is a, I always took this uh, piece of advice that when you're uh, dating, you need to pretend like it's a marriage, but when you're actually married, you need to act like you're dating. Some very, very weird stuff there. I could be wrong there. Maybe my philosophy is just out of whack, but of course, everybody's got their own style on this. So, Basically, what you're seeing is you're seeing that obviously a lot of people on the left don't want anything to do with people on the right as far as uh, relationships is concerned. And my response to that is good, good, seriously, good. Vast majority of liberal men, the very, very male, I'm going to take care of the male portion and I'll talk about the female portion on the other side here in a second. The vast majority of these liberal men, uh, and I'll talk about the ladies for a second here, but the men, they typically tend to be a little bit more on the effeminate side. They can't even identify what bathroom to go to. And of course, I have told you guys on several occasions what I really and truly think is going on there, okay? I don't think I need to rehash that, especially given YouTube's community guidelines standard and everything. And, of course, the fact that some people are getting uh, booted off this platform, part of the reason why I'm going to SA Top Content. But the thing is this right here. you got to understand something right quick. Why in the world does a liberal man start getting involved in feminist causes? Why do they start just claiming that they're male feminists? They do this because they think it gives them a better shot at hooking up with the ladies. That's one of the reason why they do this. And a lot of times, they just come off as good old-fashioned creeps. Don't get me wrong. There are creeps on the other side of the aisle. That right there being my side of the aisle, people that, quite frankly, we disown. Look, I've been watching a lot of... Jerka here recently. I think the guy's absolutely hilarious, but I also think the guy's also, uh, I think he's a bit of a wacko. Just going to go ahead and say that. And then, of course, there was also this little Twitter beef that's been going on between Dylan Dennis and Logan Paul. And, of course, people want to use Logan Paul's father, a man who claims to be a conservative, yet made out with a 16 year old girl during one of those cameras. Yet the guy is absolutely creepy. Trust me, we're not going to claim idiots like this. I don't even know why the hell I brought him up, but I also, well, I tell you right now, why I brought I don't, so kind of like, 
even at the playing field here, which I normally never really and truly do, but obviously for the purpose of this video, I'm going to do that because I can already hear somebody screaming and hollering in the, uh, in the comment section. I'm not a male feminist and I voted for Biden. You're not a male feminist, but you voted for Biden. Trust me, you're a better male. I'm just going to go ahead and say that right now. Fact of the matter is this right here, liberal men, men who are more on that left of spectrum, typically tend not to be traditional. They typically tend to not uh, do what is it traditional girls would want. That's actually a good thing because if they're not doing that right there, then that means more and more conservative and more and more moderate women won't fall for their BS. They won't fall for their tricks. I mean, I did do a video on Gear Issue 33 a while back. No way, I'm probably going to provide some updates for that channel here soon because I haven't posted for a while. Why it was I think that every single woman needs to arm? I'm pretty sure by me saying that, you probably already know where I'm going at with this. But there is something else, too, that needs to be said. And, of course, it's also the uh, conservative men and liberal women dynamic. Now, let me say this right now. There are some ladies out there who are a little bit more on the left-leaning perspective who are, in fact, attractive. Some of them, of course, are in Hollywood. I'm pretty sure most people believe that Eva Longoria, as liberal as, liberal as she is, was actually very, very good-looking. There are women out there who do exist who are on that spectrum. I have no idea what's up with her wiring, but then again, though, I don't think anybody knows what the hell is up with anybody's wiring nowadays, especially in today's society. And after doing all these videos on the ladies and why it is that they've suddenly became very delusional, more delusional than uh, you might would think, uh, it makes you wonder exactly where the hell we're going as a nation. I'm pretty sure most people already know it's to hell in a handbasket. Just figure I'd go and throw okay that out. Okay, for a man to get a hold of a girl who somewhat disagrees with him to a certain degree on certain issues, as long as you're not all feminist, lefty, loony, crazy, you know, the types of girls that you see at the pro-abortion rallies, okay? As long as, as long as you can get away from that there, you should be fine. However, there is obviously more of a caveat to this. As something like, I, I, I don't understand why he keeps going back to his crazy ex-girlfriend, and then it shows this woman in a very, uh, just like, you know, you get it. It shows the woman on, on the bed, and it's like, dude, guys don't care overwhelmingly I, older guys like I don't mean like old but like guys who are leaving the, the you know older than 30, 30 which put say older than 34 are probably going to be more like you know I'm old enough to realize you need a stable human being as a partner but let's take a look at all the red flags because I want to break this one down it's actually really really funny 76 percent of women say that it is a red flag that a dude identifies as a MAGA Republican 76. And so here, here's what I think about this first. I quite literally don't care and don't think it matters. None of this. If you're a MAGA dude who is just screaming, Trump, do you want to be with a woman who is not like you? Do you want to be with a woman who does not also agree with you politically? In which case, who cares if 76% of women think that it's a red flag you like Trump? Wouldn't you want to just date someone who likes your political view, like agrees with you and is going to build a life that works for you? If you are a woman who, doesn't, who, who thinks MAGA is a red flag, you're not going to date a MAGA guy. So for somebody who is into Trump, they're not going to date someone who's not. And they might. And also, what does red, red flag really mean? Here you go. They have no hobbies. These things start to matter a little bit more, but the political ones really don't. Having no hobbies, 66% of women, 60% of men. It makes sense. Women tend not to have hobbies. Tend not to, but don't always. They care more that men don't because men do things like men should be like doing something. Right. But I also think it's 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 somewhat immaterial. They say all lives matter. I got to be completely honest. If you are someone who goes on a date and you tell the woman or man, well, I think all lives, all lives matter to you. That's kind of a weird thing to ask. Who cares? Right. Certainly, if you're having political conversations, you're not going to want to be in a relationship with someone who isn't sharing these conversations. But let's move on. They say there are only two genders. I love this one. 34% of men say it's a red flag if a woman says there are, more, there, there are only two, two genders, meaning the overwhelming majority of men are actually good with women saying there are only two genders. 58% of women think it's a red flag if men say there are only two genders. Isn't that amazing? Look at this. They are so unbothered. They never ask details. Men really don't care. That's what I was saying. Like, Yo, a dude will walk up to a woman in a, in a Trump bikini and he's going to be like, literally don't care. Here's what I'm going to say. And this right here is going to be the final word on this right here. Typically, when you are looking to find a mate, when you're typically tend, when you're trying to find a partner, what you want to do is you want to be able to find somebody that kind of parallels your values in a way. You don't want, I don't think politics is so much the thing. 
I probably should have led with that, but I don't think politics is really and truly the main thing you should be looking for. I think it should be overall values. Okay, here's the way I think about it. You want to meet somebody with, if you've got, if you feel like you've got good values, you want to find someone who's got good values themselves, if not maybe better values. You don't want to take someone who's got lesser values, but Kim, what's going to happen then is you're going to get brought down to that level. So therefore, you typically tend to want somebody with the same type of values that you want. Now, as far as politics is concerned, typically if your values are close, your politics will probably be a lot closer than you think. I've said this right before on several occasions. Uh, especially to friends. I could date a girl who's a moderate. I could obviously date a woman who's conservative. I obviously would want a very, very good woman from a very, very good family. But I've also said that I could date a woman whose values are close to mine, even if she is a little bit left of moderate. Definitely not leftist, not, definitely not liberal. You want somebody who's closer and closer and closer to your actual value system. And you do want somebody who's going to contrast with you a little bit because let's just go ahead and be honest relationships where there's no actual contrast are really quite boring. It also leads to a lot of very, very boring nights. It leads to something that may be a little bit too safe for comfort. I mean, I'll give you guys a good example. Do you guys remember a uh, political commentator, James Carl, you know, the guy who says like, no, oh, the bald headed guy with the ugly teeth and whatnot. There were commercials that were being done back in 2012, 2013 timeframe where he was doing these commercials with his wife and they would see the little arguments about, I'm trying to roll at some of his, if, you, if I can find it, I'll put it in the B-roll footage. And his wife's the one who's a conservative. But they were trying to do is they were trying to show you that some people, of course, even though they disagree on politics or whatnot, they can be together and actually grow together as long as their value system is pretty good. But then again, the Carvel's also a bit of a nut and he's gotten nuttier over time. But still, fact of the matter is you can, in fact, be with somebody of the opposite political spectrum as long as they're not too far gone. I understand that there's going to sound a little bit contradictory, but as I've said before, as long as your value system is roughly the same or if her value system is better than that right there is what you should be going for. However, I didn't say this right here, though. If you're a woman, however, and you're trying to find a man with much, much better values, then you may want to look in the mirror. You may want to better yourself. Same thing with men, too. Same thing with men, too. You may want to actually better yourself, especially if you look for someone with higher values. That is what you should be looking for. You should be looking for that good, actual, honest-to-God family, those good people. Dude, I mean, I'm a very, very much come from a very, very working-class background, and the value system that I was given is actually a pretty good value system. Now, granted, I went off the trail for a while in my 20s, but now in my late, now I'm going back to my late 20s and going to my 30s, it seems to me like I came back to the actual values I was raised with, and thank God that happened. Of course, in my mid to late 30s, I got a little bit more base in this, but that really is what you want. You want someone who actually parallels your values and comes from close to, if not better, values than you were raised in. As far as liberal women hooking up with possible conservative men, we'll go back to what I just showed you in that TikTok there. At some point in time, a lot of these single ladies, especially those on the left, or those who are a little bit more liberal leaning, at some point in time, they're going to start to look for men who actually do the traditional thing because at the end of the day, women prefer someone who's actually masculine. They prefer a masculine male. They don't want some beta, whiny little loser who's okay with his wife doing other dudes. I mean, think about something right quick. If you're somebody who's in an open marriage, you got to ask yourself a question. If you're willing to let your wife do that crap there, and that's actually a condition of your relationship that she has to be able to do that, you know who I'm talking about, then maybe you're not a man at all, and maybe the reason why you're in a relationship with her, and by the way, she actually made it conditional to where she can run around on you, typically tends to suggest that there's probably some very, very deep emotional and mental problems there, regardless of what type of face you put on. Yes, even though these uh, libs are saying that conservatives are great big giant red flags, and obviously Tim was talking about the fact that men are going to do whatever, which by the way, for the most part is true, but I got to tell you right now, conservative women typically tend to be the best when it comes to actually uh, keeping liberal men, effeminate men away. They typically tend to be the best at sniffing this out. They typically tend to be the best at that. So no, I'm not in any way, shape, or form concerned about uh, the way women go. And if I didn't say this already, uh, or if I didn't say this already, a lot of liberal women are going to find themselves looking out, looking out for masculine men. Well, what the hell do you think happens when they start seeing masculine men? 
they do begin to start changing their minds. He did mention that earlier as well, and I actually concur with him on that. They start changing their minds on certain things. When they see how you were raised, when they see how you treat your mother, when they see how you treat your father, when they see how you are around nieces, nephews, grandkids, other people, after a while, it typically tends to radiate, uh, it typically tends to, uh, how do I say, um, it tends to move around, as if to say that it typically tends to be a little bit contagious. They start to adopt certain things. They start to see how you're raised. And after a while, they begin to start adjusting your thinking on certain things. So if anything, I think this prayer could very, very well be a plus for conservative men. Because trust me, at some point in time, a lot of these liberal ladies, to avoid cat ladies, are going to start actually seeking men out. And you never know. You may find one. They'll find one. And certain things, certain aspects of their lives will start to change. And even their thinking as well. Next thing you know, they may even be really, really, really good conservatives at some point in time. I know a lot of conservative women, by the way, that were, in fact, uh, a little bit more on the liberal side at one point in time. Life experience changes people, and obviously people change this one another. That's what I mean by the crisis in men. You see, my theory has always been that a lot of women, most of them, of course, left-leaning, and you saw this in the 2022 election after the whole Roe v. Wade thing, uh, which, by the way, of course, they decided to come out and say, we want to be able to abort our kids, even though, of course, they didn't realize it. Roe v. Wade, which is simply something that sent it back to the states. Um, basically, the, the thing is this right here. A lot of these ladies, especially in their mid to late 20s, they're going to start looking for men. They're going to start looking for men who are a little bit more successful. Well, I hate to tell you this, but there is a vast majority of men out there who are not exactly masculine. They're in their 20s right now, not the ones who are coming through high school, who typically tend to be a little bit more conservative. But the very, very liberal beta male, who by, beta males, who, by the way, would be more interested in other men and... Uh, Let's just say men who think they're ladies. Uh, yeah, I'm seeing that uh, a lot of women in that age bracket between 25 to 30 start to come around and start hooking up with men that, quite frankly, are already somewhat successful and more than likely very masculine and more than likely also more on the conservative side. Now, guys, before I end this video, I'm going to give you guys a couple of updates. I've not posted the Gear Issue 33, but I've also been putting some of the videos in the description box. I'll probably lay a few more in there as well for you guys to see and leave a couple in the comments. Uh, and I'll probably leave some in the comments section. The first blood review is still up, and of course it didn't really get a whole lot of play, but a lot of that's because YouTube stymied it in the early going because of the copyright thing, which by the way, I eventually won that case. But... Um, I'm going to start back posting to Gear Issue 33, hopefully at the end of the month, or hopefully at the very beginning of the month. The idea, of course, was to turn that channel into a pure video essays type channel, where this channel right here, we're going to start phasing video essays in, probably at the start of the year. I was supposed to get the uh, the Death of ESPN video out, it was supposed to be like the very, very first one, but uh, copyright is forcing me to go back and make some more adjustments. The video was actually posted for Sunday night, but of course, the copyright claims keep coming in, I keep losing on the appeal. And as much as I keep changing it, it's probably going to force me to push it back to Saturday because there's a lot in there. My fear is that eventually that essay is going to get uh, an hour long. is eventually going to be chalked down to nothing more than uh, 20 minutes because of YouTube's copyright scheme. With that right there being said, guys, make sure you guys hit that like button. If you guys are new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Please hit the notifications bell. I would love to hear what you guys have got to say in the comment section. Please leave one in there. Please also inform me uh, where you think I might have uh, gotten things wrong, where you disagree with me at, or if you want to leave a compliment, please do. With that right there being said, I'll see you guys later.